on this page, it says, will you... <laughs> in my heart of hearts whenever I imagined marriage it was me walking down the aisle <laughs> with Edric oh you're massaging my hand right now. <laughs> he's massaging my hand <laughs> the coping mechanism yeah. I think when I was being mentored at that time I asked these practical questions how will I know if I'm supposed to go back into a relationship and here's the background and part of the advice they gave is you know you wait on God to speak to you specifically so i waited on him i'm like god if you want me to go let me know because you know there I, should i pursue someone else should i not and then when i was praying specifically about joy a verse in the bible exodus 33 verse 13 to 14 was the moment when moses was also asking god should i go and and do this thing you want me to do which is to lead the people i'm not sure i should do this and god said i will go with you and i will my presence will go before you and give you peace and i was like is this the verse so I spoke to the people who are mentoring. I'm like, hey, so you asked me to pray and here's what I've come across. And they're like, that looks like it. So Edric, why don't you go? And the, the long story short is that's when we got back together. Yeah. And immediately as we got back together, I already proposed to her. I got the blessing of my parents, her parents, and we ended up um, married. Our, our, and our engagement was super short. It was like four two, months. three months. Yeah. Four months. Well, four months. So How was the proposal? Yeah. Like something. <laughs> Okay. okay, you can describe this. I'm gonna get so that. there was one evening when Edric said, hey, let's, why don't we have dinner in your old house in Valley Golf? Um, oh. Because our family had moved to, to Ortega's area um, after the robbery um, that mm. happened in our house. Mm. My parents, to about two years after, or a year after, we moved um, into Ortega's area. So I had never showed the old house to Edric um you know I, I and so when he suggested hey why don't we have dinner no no he didn't say why don't we have dinner it was a group date Jenny Jenny and, and Paul. Paul who said hey Jenny's mom because they were renting Jenny's parents were renting Jenny is my sister in law <laughs> condensed version <laughs> okay Jenny's mom <laughs> said invited us to dinner the four of us my brother paul and my 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 not yet sister-in-law jenny and then edric and myself so, so they we were, were dating they were to, dating at that time we paul were and supposed jenny were to go there for dinner and then so i got ready and everything i was super excited because i was like oh yes finally edric can see the, the house, house where i grew up and so i got ready and then edric was late and he wasn't just late my brother and sister-in-law called and they said um you know what we, we probably won't make it because we're still coming from something uh we're coming from Pasai from um and we were gonna be late and so I was like I was up, I was a little bit upset actually because I was stressed about the mm. the situation because I was like you know what Linda Reed is cooking for us we can't be late this is not even our engagement Paul Paul you were the one that invited us to this you have to be there how can Edric and I just go to the house anyway to make a long story short we ended up going anyway and my mom she was like is that what you're gonna wear maybe you should change to something else I'm like huh okay so I, I I changed to something else she's like oh that's so much nicer and then what as I left Edric finally came to pick me up and then as I left they were all on the stairs and they're saying bye okay have a good time and I'm like this is really weird because they don't really do that <laughs> so we, we we go off we, it was an amazing dinner it was all my favorite foods I'm like wow you know Linda Reed really knows how to cook really good food and it's all my favorite food and then Edric was just kind of you know, smiling. And then he had told me, oh, by the way, when you come, hey, why don't we do something super fun? Why don't you bring all the paraphernalia from when we were dating and let's look through it. I'm like, that is a really weird request, but okay, I'll do it. So <laughs> I brought it. So we're going through all this stuff. And then he brings out this old Bible of his, like the first Bible he ever had. And he asked me, so, you know, what's God been teaching you lately? And I said, well, you know, God's been teaching me this and this. And that. Like to really trust him and in Moses, the story. And he's like, oh, you know, I've also been reading about Moses. And you know what God showed me? And he pulls out the Bible and he, he says, look at this passage. So he makes me turn to it. And it's Genesis, right? No, Exodus, it's Exodus. It's Exodus. Yeah. No, here yeah, first, it starts here. 
So it, it's wait, here. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Let's try the Bible. Sorry. It's got a lot of junk in it. Don't drop it. Okay, okay. So, so the passage is here. Okay. He, he hmm. highlighted it. And then, so it says there, right? I myself, the Lord answered, will go along to give you rest. I'm looking here, but on this page, it says, will you <laughs> marry me? And he put the ring here. Oh. So, and the, the tip of the question mark was um, the ring. So I, I didn't see it at first. Show again, I was, show again, show again. Oh, yeah. Wow. Really? That's creative. Okay. Uh, yeah. Wow. So then when I saw it, I was looking at it and I was in disbelief and I didn't answer right away because my third request was that he had asked my parents. So I didn't feel like I could say yes right away. So I was looking and then yeah. I think the Holy Spirit told him, tell her that he said, oh, by the way, I got the blessing of my parents and, and your, your parents. parents. And they said, yes. So yeah. then I, of course, I said, okay, yes, then of course I'll marry you. So. Yay. <laughs> wow. So 20 years later. So we're 20 yeah. years married this year. Yeah. And, you know, I think um, when you look back, it's not a perfect journey, but um, we definitely uh, uh, learned some things in the ride. Yeah. Uh, and I would marry Joy all over again in a heartbeat. So that's the law oh. answer to the law. No, guys, I think that your story would speak to so many, especially singles today, who are, you know, stumbling through the, the course and the path. So yeah, yeah. so many, um, so many singles today uh, in relationships whether in or out of relationships mm. are struggling through purity yeah. and mm. and many of them yeah, purity is not their goal at all and so uh, what your story really showed me was that you were not you were not both perfect it was a real struggle for you both even though you were both christians already but then by god's grace um mm. he gave you conviction so that um you can start from square one with each mm. other yeah. And I think it's great. Um, it's very real. It's very real. Okay. Ay, naku, baby boy. <laughs> That's very real. That's real. Okay. I think, you know, purity is something, as Edric said, that we still have to pursue even in marriage. Mm -hmm. I mean, just because you're married doesn't mean all of a sudden that no temptation. all those temptations go away. Yeah. We know this because we know people who fall. So I think it's, it's a standard that God continually wants us to to um live up to because he wants to bless us and because he wants what's best for us and i think a lot of times we have the impression that if we do things our way or the world's way that we're going to be happier but the very opposite is true you may be happy maybe momentarily but in the end the bible says there is a way that leads unto death you know man's way doesn't always lead it doesn't lead to life right so so what seems right to a man may lead to death. And I think in the case of purity, and even now looking back as we counsel couples, as we uh, have journeyed in the faith, we can really see the blessings in the marriages of those who have stayed pure and really tried to honor that. Or if they made a mistake, yeah. that they repented and they you know, tried to fix it to honor God and how then God has honored their marriage. And when the Bible says, you know, you keep the marriage bed undefiled, it's supposed to be held in honor above all. So that also applies now, like even with what we watch, what we listen to, if we're watching a movie and there's a lot of sexual content in it, Edric and I just don't feel peace about it. And we walk away from that because we don't think that that's honoring to God. So purity Although it started to walk away in the bedroom. Now. I just click. Just click. <laughs> but so purity is, is a standard, whether you're married or single, and it's not because any of us dictate it. It's because as Edric said, it's what God designed for us to, to, to be is be holy as I am holy. And, yeah, and there are practical consequences, right? So I said, yeah. the first question is that why should you even consider these standards, right? You need to answer that question. But when it starts to make sense, then even practical considerations, like if you don't stay pure, there's all this disease now, mm. right? There's the chance that you can get pregnant even prior. And that just creates a whole world of problems. Yeah. Um, and even when you get into marriage, all of the damage, if you will, or the baggage that you have will affect the, the way you enjoy sex and mm. appreciate the intimacy in marriage. You know, when the Bible says, right, that <clears throat> a husband shall leave his father and his mother and the two shall become one flesh hmm. that oneness of flesh 
there was no marriage ceremony that we know of in the garden. What we know is that they had sex and, and that, that was, was it. that was That's it. marriage. That's what marriage was. And I don't think we realize that every time we have sexual immorality with somebody, something that's outside of marriage where you, where you, where you have intercourse or you do sexual things, you're creating this oneness, this bond that, that God did not intend for us to have outside, outside. of marriage. Mm -hmm. It's a bond that's supposed to help you really connect with each mm -hmm. other in marriage. It's mm -hmm. like it's supposed to be like a glue. But the more you do that with everybody else, it's like it loses its its power in the marriage when you eventually get married married and that's why a lot of people who struggled with sexual immorality outside of marriage ma marriage doesn't automatically make them want to stop doing that it's yeah. very hard and, and maybe a last practical principle also is and since we're 20 years married right and we're being surrounded with people who are like some are in their 50s plus or, 60 or so years and, and you know the the libido surrounding purity begins to wane <laughs> on a very practical note, right? You and you want to ask yourself, you want to ask yourself, what is holding your marriage together? And if at the start, you know, you're so enamored by these, you know, the sexual sex things and all that, and there is nothing else, like you're not able to connect on a deeper level. You don't enjoy the same things. You're not able to talk about life. You're not able to wrestle through things together. Then it will really be founded on something artificial, when that starts to wane, what then, yeah. right? So that's mm. that's part of the way that I would help people okay. think through it. You know, you don't always have to hit them with like churchy or, but it's it's a very practical consideration mm. as well. There are consequences practically. There are relational consequences and challenges later on when the novelty, if you will, starts to wear out. What is it that's holding you together? Mm. Um, you know, and even the complexities of having kids and how, you know, as, as we know, right, you can't always have sexual intimacy because there's a new baby and all that. So then what holds you together? Yeah. Right. So, so really it's the commitment first yeah. before the act. Right. Yeah. And that's God's design yeah. that it happens in a committed relationship, that covenant relationship so that there is that sense of security. And that's why if you look at the passage in scripture, shortly after that, it says they were naked and not ashamed. Mm -hmm. So that's how God designed it. Right. If, if the commitment is there, that one, that, that Purity. marriage is there that's the that's the commitment mm. and you've chosen to say okay for better for worse we're never going to part unless death parts us and then you have sex you, you can be naked and unashamed because you you feel absolutely secure with this person that's how god designed it but if you've been giving yourself left and right and then you've come into the marriage mm. and you're not sure who was who was my husband slept with and how do i compare or you know, I had this experience and it doesn't seem as great. And you know what I mean? That's not how God designed it. It's supposed to be the commitment first, that that commitment before him, the marriage commitment. And then that sex is Amen. then just an expression of that commitment, but it's supposed to be the commitment. First. I guess on a very, very crude note, uh, you, sorry, this alliance, but on a very crude note, I would compare it to buying a new car and a secondhand car. Let's just put it that way, right? <laughs> all of the issues all of the questions on a second-hand car versus a new car i mean that's kind of what purity is it's like it's a new experience it's wonderful i don't have any fears worries because it's brand new i mean that's i guess that's for also both you of wanna, you though. For both.